He was a very curious man, curious about people, about what was going on, about the events, the political events. Uh, uh, he was going out of his studio a lot. He loved to take his camera and just go in the street and, and photograph people and meet them. He used to say that the choice was the hardest part of being a photographer because the, what you choose, well, explains uh, what your look on things on life is. So it's very important and you don't, you have to be careful not to choose too many photographs, for example, for a book, for an exhibition. So he chose photographs, um, what he considered important in the composition, in the framing of his photographs, how he wanted photographs to talk together and um, how to include some weaker composed photographs in a selection because it gives a meaning. He felt that it was important that a public institution in France would host his archive. That was the best guarantee to, to protect the archive for the longest possible time. And it took years to find the right place. He also had the idea that uh, someone needed to uh, follow yeah. the archive mm -hmm. and it was one of the conditions that he wrote that the institution which would receive the legacy would also host this association, mm -hmm. Les Amis de Marc Ribou. We were approached by uh, Sophie Macariou, the head of uh, Musée Guimet. He loved uh, Musée Guimet and uh, its collections. He had traveled to many Asian countries. It looked completely obvious to us. And then we worked for a few years with the museum's administrative services to, to settle everything in order on one side to protect his work, all his negative, his color slides, which are fragile, vintage prints, uh, publications, but at the, um, on the other hand, to keep promoting his work and distributing it. The museum said, okay, well, now that we are receiving uh, this uh, donation, we would like to do a big exhibition to welcome this archive. So that's why this exhibition in a new scale became a retrospective. We focus on Asian countries, Asia on a wide uh, sense from uh, Middle East to, to Japan. We worked about the choice, so we, we, we worked on the choice with uh, Catherine Rivou, with Sophie Macariou and with uh, Jérôme Guéquier, who was the head of the photography collection of the museum. So we were uh, four pair of eyes <laughs> looking at Marc Rivou photograph, was to uh, find a balance between what Catherine Rivou and I wanted to show, which was mostly the look of Marc Ribou and what makes his photographs unique and his own. And on the side of the museum, maybe a, a more, sometimes a more documentary approach on the countries in the time he visited them. And Catherine Ribou and I were here to, to be sure that we would exhibit photographs that are truly his expression. Marc Ribou was a photographer, he was active and he was not really concerned about organizing himself, his archive. So we still have an ongoing work which is needed on the archive to be sure that everything is protected the best way we can. That is why we have started this work on the contact sheets. We still have a lot to do with the negatives who were uh, stored in the labs and so exposed to all the chemicals. So this is one uh, side of the projects we are doing now hand in hand with the museum and on the other side uh, i feel that it's it's only beginning that uh, the archive uh, being now at Guinea museum it should be a possibility for the museum to establish links and uh, uh, links with other artists photographers but many others that worked in these countries or who are coming from these countries because we also have a, a French history with many of these countries. And I feel that his work is um, easy to access and to read and that makes it very actual. And I hope that uh, the museum will uh, take advantage of it to establish some programs with uh, different publics.
Apart from Guimet Museum, there are some collections of prints. In public institutions like uh, Centre Pompidou, they have uh, about 200 prints and some very beautiful vintages. There are also uh, Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris. They have uh, a collection of uh, prints that Marc Ribou probably gave after a retrospective he had at this museum in 1985. There are museums in uh, the United States who handle a few prints, like the Art Institute of Chicago, who hosted his first exhibition in 1964, about a decade before uh, any French institution. Uh, the MoMA has a uh, very few prints, that a uh, few the Met also, a uh, few prints of China. I know there is uh, the Moderna Musée in Stockholm, who has an interesting uh, ensemble of prints from the 70s, very uh, photojournalist work. And then there are some private collections as well. One of our interests would be to exhibit his work in, in countries uh, that have not exhibited his work before. So we have projects with different countries in that way. Uh, we are also eager to um, try new forms of uh, showing photography. For example, we are now working with a French uh, jazz man, a pianist who is uh, quite uh, famous. Um, who, with whom we are preparing uh, what we call a photo concert. So he, he would play his music that he composes himself and we would project images and then we, we would like <laughs> to do projects uh, linked with other photographers. So that could be a younger generation of photographers mm -hmm. who uh, are from the countries, more photograph or work on representing these countries that could be you know supporting projects more photojournalism in these areas of the world <laughs> <laughs>